Just FYI, everybody, I just hit record, so um, we would like to have this on uh, recorded in case other people down the road would like to watch it if they were not able to be here in person. So, uh, yeah, it's being recorded. All right. And then, do we have everybody from Team Overcharge? Is that correct? Overcharge? Yeah, overcharged. Um, I see my coaches in the call, and uh, me check. Yeah. yeah, I'm here. Both of our mentors are here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, well, I'm going to um, actually check. I think it's 4.15 or actually 4.16, so I think we're actually good to go. So I'm going to turn it over to Overcharged. Again, just to let everybody know that uh, this session is being recorded and um, I actually have other things I need to get to, so I'll, I'll try to check in on you every once in a while. But um, yeah, have fun. I'll let you guys take it away. Thank you. All right, let me pull up the presentation. All right, hello everybody. My name is Parthiv Nair. I'm the co-captain of FTC team 12599 Overcharged. Here with me, I have my coach, Sanquin Wang, one of our mentors, Suresh Nair, and our former captain, Advait Nair. So without further ado, let me get into the presentation. Go. Starting off, this is our team. Uh, this is when we got the Promote Award at Worlds. And in addition to this, we did get a nomination for Connect at Worlds. So this is our team. Starting off, let's get to know me a little bit. Uh, this is my fourth year of FIRST. I've done one year of FLL, and this is my third year in FTC in Overcharged. In 2018, we won first place in Spire at Oregon State. And in 2019, we got third place in Spire at Oregon State. And also in 2019, we were the winning alliance in Oregon State. And now let's talk about Worlds. We're the third ranked alliance captain for two years in a row now of Franklin Division. Now let's start with the outline of this presentation. First, we're gonna be covering the awards. Second, we're going to be covering about the engineering notebook, mainly what it's used for and the different sections within the engineering notebook. And third, we're going to be talking about the different notebook methods, mainly ways to make it yours and how our Spark Tech teams do it. Starting off with the awards, we have the Promote Award. Submission Tech Award. Uh, can you guys still hear me? Yes. yes. Can you guys still hear me? Yes. yes. Is it working? Okay. Uh, so the promote video is a video type submission and basically it's a PSA topic that's related to STEM. Last year's topic was if every student participated in first, the world would be blank. Next, we have the Compass Award, which is basically a video submission about a mentor. And this mentor has given outstanding guidance and support to a team and demonstrates what it means to be a gracious professional. And then we have the judges award, which is given to a unique team that stands out to the judges, but doesn't fit in the award categories. The control award celebrates a team that uses sensors and software to increase the robots functionality in the playing field. And the design award is given to the team that shows industrial design at its best. The award recognizes the elements of the robot that are both functional and aesthetic. Next, we have the Motivate Award, which is given to the team that's able to spark others to embrace the culture of FIRST. Then we have Collins Aerospace Innovate Award, also known as the Rockwell Collins Innovate Award, which is given to the team that's able to bring ideas from concept to reality. And then we have the Connect Award, which is given to the team that's able to connect the dots between FIRST community, FIRST itself, and the diversity of the engineering world. Then we have the Think Award, which is given to the team that's able to remove engineering obstacles through creative thinking and effective documentation. 
And lastly, we have the most important award, the Inspire Award. The Inspire Award is given to the team that embodied the challenge of the First Tech Challenge program. It's mainly a combination of all of the awards above, which is basically what gives its name the All Rounders Award. And for the Inspire Award, a good notebook can be really, really helpful. Hey, uh, Parthiv, I hear some clicking noise. I don't know from where it's coming, but he's uh, the door. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So this brings us to our first key concept that the notebook is essential to almost every judge award. This means that the more you add and the more content you put in within your notebook, it gives the judges more motive to nominate you for the award that they chose to. Now moving on to our second part of the presentation, we have the engineering notebook itself. Now starting off, let's ask ourselves, what really is an engineering notebook? Well, the notebook is the key to pretty much every FTC award. It's basically where you document your team's journey throughout the season. So then again, it gives the judge motive to nominate you for awards. The notebook has three main sections. First one is the engineering meetings. This is what you do in every meeting. The outreach entries is what you did at every outreach. And the business plan is your financial statements as a team, how much you receive and how much you spend. They work hand in hand to show your progress as a team. So this means that there's a new notebook every season and it's basically a track of what you did during the season. So your journey from your first year may be different from the journey in your current year because you've already gone through those hurdles from the first year and all of those challenges, but now you're aware of where they really are and how to get over them. And the last point would be that there is no real template to follow, just a bunch of tips. And that's because it's your notebook. You get to play around with all the fonts, all the pictures, all the content, and pretty much you can own your own notebook. This brings me to our next key concept that the notebook isn't tedious if you plan it out in advance. Um, let me go let my dog out for a second. All right, uh, sorry guys, here. Um, back to the, point, the notebook isn't tedious if you plan it out in advance. I've had a little bit of in our first year of Relic Recovery. I had to do lots and lots of lot notebook preparation and lots of entry notes minute. And if we had known beforehand that we could have planned it out and done it more evenly throughout the season, then we would have had more time to work on the robot and we would have basically been more to do the uh oh. Required. Starting off with binders, the recommendation is one two inch binder or maybe three inch depending on uh, how much content you have in your notebook. Then you need a cover page, which is basically your team name and your team number. And then you have a summary page, which is basically the intro to your team, as well as flag page numbers for the judges to look at. So they know, oh, uh, this team marked page 56. So I can go look at that and see what all they want me to look at. And then you have the key sections, which is engineering meetings, outreach entries, and business plan. As I mentioned previously, the business plan is optional, but it is strongly recommended because it gives you more nominations for different awards, like the Connect Award. Now this brings us to our next key concept. You should always include pictures. You may have heard the phrase, a picture is worth a thousand words, and you can use that phrase to your advantage in the engineering notebook by adding pictures whenever necessary. Now let's get more detail into our main sections, starting off with the engineering meetings. The engineering meetings are basically a summary of the meetings, and you should also include your design. Basically, you should include every iteration of your robot to show your design process, and kind of helps you um, explain your design cycle a little bit better. And then you have the outreach entries, which is essentially your discussion for outreach and your reason for action. Mainly what was the goal of the outreach and what you wanted to take away from it. Then we have the business plan, which are three different parts. We have goals, sustainability, and funding. 
An example of a goal could be reach X amount of people or raise Y amount of money. As for sustainability, it's essentially about how you will survive and how do you set yourself up for success in following years. Examples of this is by like asking yourself, do you have enough funding for proper equipment at tournaments or proper food and drink? All sorts of things. And last but not least, the funding. This is basically uh, letting you know if you have enough money for the different build parts or the proper equipment for your workshop. Next, we have the team summary, which is basically you talk about the team structure and the team systems that you use. And then you have the controller word, which is basically where you fill out your controller word sheet. Now, within this controller word sheet, you have different, uh, different information things to like put into it. Like for example, the autonomous paths, and you have the softwares that you use or the sensors, algorithms, and for more information, you can check out the first uh, website under the FTC section, but that's like a basic gist of what's in it. Then you have the summary page, which is basically an introduction to your team. The cover page is where you have your team name, your team number, and as well as the optional design if you really wanted it. The table of contents is where you display your engineering meetings, your outreach entries, et cetera. And you can also include anything else. Your notebook is unique to your team which is like kind of saying that you should include anything else that you want to to make it stand out to the judges. This brings me to my next point. Anything you think is important, you should include it because any opportunity or any chance that you have to show the judges that your notebook is a lot better than another team's notebook, you should go for it because that'll make you stand out a lot more to them. Moving on to our last part of the outline, you have the notebook methods. Start off by asking yourself, how do we create this massive document? Well, there are four different ways to do it, and these are the most uh, commonly used methods throughout FTC. First would be Google Drive, second, Office 365, third is Word, and fourth are handwritten notes. Now, a key concept is that you don't need the prettiest notebook to win awards. And by this, I mean your graphic design doesn't need to be the best quality there is in the world. And you also don't need to put graphic design all throughout your notebook. It just needs to be an average, like normal amount of graphic design throughout your notebook and only in places where it is necessary, not like all over the place. Now let's get on to how the Spark Tech teams do the engineering notebook, starting off with 7013 Hotwired. They use Google Drive and Microsoft Word, and they also do their engineering notebook in a group of people, which is their EN team. Then we have 12808 Revamped Robotics. They use Office Online and everybody writes the notebook. And lastly, we have our team 12599 Overcharged. We use Google Drive to do the initial planning phase and drafting phase, and then finish off with Microsoft Words for finalizing and the last bit of formatting. We use a group type of system. Uh, we call it the interview system, where a group of people in the EN team, if they don't know what already is happening, like by happening, I mean like what happens throughout building, what happens through programming. And if they don't already know what happens, they can go and interview the different members who have done it. And with all the information that they collect, they type that into the engineering notebook. Now, what do you do next? Well, first you have to start your planning. This is where you get an essential idea of what you're going to be doing for your engineering meetings, your outreach entries, and your business plan. And you have to like get the basic idea of what you're going to be doing. The second step would be to finalize the formatting. This is basically where you finalize what font you're going to use, what font size you're going to use, what type of layout you're going to go with, and the different sections. And then the third and final part would be to start documenting. And this is where you actually start writing your engineering notebook in the format that you've laid out. If you have any need or you need any guidelines to look at for the engineering notebook, your best resource is first. And that wraps up the presentation. Thank you all for listening. If you have any questions or just want to talk, you can email me at parthivnair1 at gmail.com. Or you can email the team at overchargedrobotics at gmail.com. 
And if you want any more information on how our team is, how we do our swerve drive, or any other presentations, you can visit overchargedrobotics.org for more information. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, we are open for questions. If you have any questions, then just feel free to ask us. Engineering Notebook, uh, it's, it's one of the important tasks uh, for the FTC teams. And we spent a lot of time on it. And of course, as a students, they have a lot other things to work on, you know, including their schoolwork, homework. So um, it, it's always have been a struggle for us to try to keep up with the entries and the meetings. And it, in, in that sense, actually a good for students to supervise themselves. So we have, uh, usually have an engineering czar uh, supervising the progress of the engineering notebook. And, and we, over the years, we deploy multiple methods and some of those, like, you know, we have a, a list in the Google Doc and label out who is going to do what and then just check the progress and for the milestones and some other methods as well. You know, um, we, we just try to do all of the above, you know, all of the above, all the ways we can think of. And it's still um, a, a struggle for us. I don't know other teams that they have. Uh, do you have a better strategies to have the students, team members, to get the test done in time? And uh, I, I would like to hear about that. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, can, go ahead. So uh, my name is Suresh, and I'm one of the mentors of uh, for overcharged. Uh, if you're wondering, like, um, our team was kind of blessed for the last two years where the kids completely kept us out of the engineering notebook. We had no idea what's happening. And initially we were kind of concerned, like, are they really doing the job? Will they have a notebook? Uh, and then uh, we just left it to them. And after the first ever tournament for the team, um, overcharged, uh, where they won the Inspire Award, we were absolutely confident and we never went to look back at the notebook at all because we knew that they can take care of that themselves. And to speak to it, um, uh, we have our former captain that's uh, for the last two years um, online here, um, he's Advait Nair, he can tell you more about how maybe how we went about it and how he kept us out of the loop to handle all these things. Advait, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Advait. As my dad mentioned, I was the previous captain of the team. My camera's not on because my dorm is very messy right now. But uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be more than willing to uh, help you guys out because I know the entering management uh, process, especially for the notebook, is very, very, very difficult. And uh, as like the guy who did like 99% of the management, in the past two years, I can tell you it was like a huge overhaul that combined with like the whole college application process was not fun for me. So if you want to relieve any of the stress, ask me the questions now, I will give you the advice. Yeah, I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Alex. Um, I guess my, this is my first year coaching an FTC team. And I suppose it just seems like the students who join robotics do not join because they want to do a notebook. So it just kind of seems like a drag that um, when I mention it to them, they all kind of point fingers and say, I don't want to do it. That should be his job or that should be her job. So um, I suppose, what are some ways that you motivate? And also what are some ways that you keep it from becoming just the sole responsibility of one very motivated student? How do you keep from overworking that student? If you Yeah. So that, that goes down all to the management capabilities. So there are different management methods. I believe we have one in like, uh, we have a slide regarding this in like a different presentation, but uh, there are different methods in order to organize it. So for example, like Partha was mentioning, one thing that Overcharge is trying for this year, because they don't have that one motivated student this year, is the interviewing method where they have a list of interviewers or like a group of interviewers. And that way they go and cycle around and uh, they interview the people who build 
because the thing is that you don't want the builders to be writing the entries. That was a mistake we made last year and that really halted progress on the robot. And at the same time, when they were working on the robot, it halted progress on the engineering notebook. And I had to find myself going back and forth while uh, the builders are working on the notebook. I had to build while the notebook people were working on the build. I had to do the notebook and it was really annoying. But this way, the uh, interviewing process kind of has people split up into two different teams because I personally believe that uh, business is a very important part of engineering itself, especially the documentation process. Because if you're going to make a product, for example, in this case, the robot, right, you're going to need the proper documentation to ensure that the robot is properly made. And that's how it's going to work in the real world. So it is something that is useful. And yes, people don't like usually join engineering for that aspect but it is something to definitely look into so i guess in order to like reduce the whole uh obligation aspect of it maybe encourage them by saying this is just you guys writing about your robot this is you guys sharing your journeys with the other people think of them as investors like in shark tank or something right you want to show them your story you want to show them your journey you want to show them how you built that robot that's essentially what you're doing with the entering notebook it's a very simple process so Sorry, um, but it sounds like you said you don't want the builders writing your entries. You want, mm -hmm. what do you mean by that? So you have students or team members who it's like you designate a few team members who it's their responsibility to take care of the notebook and the, and the students who are responsible for building the robot are not involved other than just being interviewed regularly. Is that how you run that? Yeah, for the most part, that's the experimental structure we're working with this year. And so far, it seems to be working properly because we do have a couple of managers. We have a lot of people who write the entries and interview the builders because the builders can focus on their building components, especially like Parthiv, right? He's one of the main builders of the team. He's super dedicated to that building. And like Parthiv, you actually want to talk a little bit more about the system? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if you guys can hear me. Like, so, so give a thumbs up because uh, my... All right, uh, thank you. So about the building, um, as an example, I'll mention our relic recovery year during winter break. So during this time period, I had to do like eight hours of building a day. Okay, that's probably a little bit of a stretch, but like six hours of building a day for like wow. constant an entire week. Yeah. I'm on a webinar. Oh yeah, I know. We're going to talk about the robot. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll continue. So the winter break of Relic recovery. I had to do lots and lots of building, and during this time period as well, we had to do. Uh, we were like forced with lots of engineering notebook stuff to do because um, the state championships and league championships were all coming up, and we had to like kind of bring up the engineering notebook to uh, a sort of level that we think is pretty good, and it wasn't there quite. It wasn't quite there yet. So, um, in that time, while I had to do lots and lots of building. I also had to do assisting in the engineering notebook and writing all these entries, which cost like so much. Like I either had to do focusing only on the building or only on the engineering notebook. And that kind of like collided with each other and caused a little bit of problems. So that's, that's basic. That's like the basic idea of why we implemented the engine, um, the interview system within our team. Okay. Thank you. So, so we have tried all kinds of different methods to get the team members to write the, the, the entries. So we have done, you know, single uh, uh, engineer notebook czar, which is uh, su supervisors, and uh, assign all the entries to the, to the kids. And because of the conflicts in between, you know, building times and engineering notebook time, so, so this kinds of uh, work arrangement usually happens when the students go home. And they would do it at home, but but it's it's not guaranteed. So they sometimes, most of often, uh, they come back with the entries empty. Say, why don't you work at home? Oh, I have homework at home, so I have to do the homework. And they come here and come to the meetings. Uh, then get involved involved into the building, and don't have time to really work on the engineering notebook. So, so that's prompt us to explore all different kinds of methods, including this, this interview, interviewing systems. And it works somehow, um, but not all the team members were following this interview process. Some, some people will do interview, some were encouraged to write themselves because of the, 
importance of the entry. So we really wanted this builders to write it so that they, they can have their own you know, takeaways and showing up in the engineering entries. Any questions? Um, I'll just ask another one if that's all right. Um, what, uh, as far as entries go, what um, you said that there is no real template, but I, I suppose that uh, every day you make progress on the robot and on the software that you're implementing on the robot and you, you document that progress in the notebook. So it's a regular thing. It happens every time your team meets. What sort of do you, do you guys follow a template or do you do it differently every time you make an entry? Um, yeah, how do you guys um, do that? When I mentioned about like there is no template, it's your notebook. I mentioned that like for the different teams, they have a different perception of how the engineering notebook is and they should kind of do it within their own eyes, not like follow. You need to do this first and then like these three specific things and then reasons for those. Like that's what I meant by the template. Okay. If that was your question. Like if that wasn't answered, you can like. Uh, let me know. Parthiv, but you do have a template, right? Like a template that you use. Oh, like that? We do have a layout that we have to, that we write our entries. Right. Yeah, we do. So you fill in like what the day is, who was at the meeting, what yeah. happened at the meeting. You'll maybe add a picture or whatever, whatever you added to the robot or what your design change was. Um, you have a certain way that you organize your entry, whether it's in a chart or, or something like that. Um, yeah. It just helps you organize your, your entry for each day, I see. Mm -hmm. Will you make this presentation available to us? Uh, yeah, it will be up soon, maybe in like a week or so. The, the PowerPoint? Yeah. Uh, well, okay, that'll be up on the first website, I guess. Yeah. Okay, appreciate it. Uh, this one won't be up on the first website. It'll be up on the overcharge website, which you can find the information for on the slide that he's on right now. Okay, gotcha. Overcharge yeah. Robotics, gotcha. Mm -hmm. And we also have a bunch of other resources too, by the way. If you'd like, feel free to check it out. There's a lot about CAD, scouting, a uh, bunch of information that can be useful. And we also have some information from a forum that we hosted a while back. It's all on the website. You can go and navigate it yourself. You'll find a bunch of presentation and resources there. They're all super helpful for Wiki teams. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, of course. So we usually use a Google Doc as a as a place for people to write the the entries, the first entries, and then we have other people's go in and then uh, edit the paragraph. And, and and then we have some other people come in and and, and assemble those paragraphs into uh, following uh, into the word doc and yeah. with those templates i can actually talk a little bit about the whole word document stuff yeah, yeah just for some people to be careful so one thing that some teams do in general is uh use microsoft onedrive i think parts have mentioned that and uh, it's a cloud version of Google Drive, essentially, but it has Microsoft Word. And uh, it generally, people have the misconception that it's a very good platform for formatting and it's going to be super useful. But the issue is that because it's all on the cloud, uh, it, the features are, first of all, limited. And second, once you start making the document, it gets super cluttered and like nearly impossible to scroll down. Like As of right now, the Word document that I have saved on my computer, it's very easy to load up, very easy to scroll through. But uh, when I tried messing with Microsoft OneDrive and making a Word document on there, it was nearly impossible for me to scroll through it. So I wouldn't recommend that. It's good for formatting much better than Google Drive. However, I would highly recommend you download a copy of uh, Microsoft Word if that's possible because you'll be able to get perfect formatting on there. And then with that, like uh, a lot of stuff that I did was like, focusing on little bits of formatting. But uh, one note that actually I was reading on First website in their own uh, Enter Notebook Guide, which I do recommend you check out on, that one's on the First website. Um, it talks about how you don't need perfection, but that's something that I personally do because 
that's just the way that I work. But uh, you don't need every single uh, word to be perfect, right? For example, there could be grammatical errors. There could be typos. It's fine because after all, at the end of the day, we are still engineers. We are going to make silly mistakes. It's fine if we do something like that. However, what you don't want is to mess up the fundamental aspect of the content or like the key sentences or the bullet points behind it. That's something that you're going to want to have like the actual content itself needs to be good, but the way you write it shouldn't be a huge issue. So if someone is like thinking that they're not the best writer out there, it shouldn't really be an issue. You can more than encourage them to go and write the entries because that's not going to be a huge uh, problem when it comes to the judging because the judges, they don't really mind whether or not there's going to be a couple of typos in there or a couple of errors. What they do care about is seeing the thought process behind the team and what the content really is. And that's the first and foremost thing that they look at, which is exactly what you need to be focusing towards. So I'm sure that will work out really well. Uh, in the past, we also, you know, have a, a few years and with the dedicated engineering team members, engineering notebook team members to go do the engineering notebook, write it and compile it, format it. Um, these engineering notebook team members, they don't have much time to do anything else other than just writing the engineering notebook. And after a few years, we abandoned this method, and we were, we like you know everyone participates in writing the engineering notebook, and do not overburden a single people's like with the engineering notebook task. Um, but you know sometimes some teams will do that, and we 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 can talk about pros and cons of that. But I think you know it's better to spread the workloads uh, among the team members. And then, of course, you want, you want uh, team members to be the supervisors. And through that, they can learn how to supervise the work progress and uh, meet the um, milestones. And that's important of the, the, also the learning items there, learning targets there. Yeah, one thing to add on that, uh, as uh, Coach Zenkun was saying, is the aspect of the members kind of leading everything, which is really important in my opinion, because uh, I've seen notebooks that were written by the kids, and I've also seen notebooks that were not so written by the kids, and uh, I can tell you it's very, very obvious to see which one's which, and uh, when you see the kids writing something you also see a lot of passion behind it and that's the reason why you want the kids to write it because they're able to like document their whole process by themselves right for example not every meeting needs to be super super formal like we've had a couple of meeting entries in our notebook from the past year like i believe the first meeting entry we had was a social meeting entry where we just went to the park and what we documented was not about the robotics it was not about what we learned but it was really about our experiences and playing games in the park and how we socialized and like that was actually a really important aspect for us to getting that third place inspired this year because it kind of shows behind the the uh, robotic kids we're also a team and that's like very very important and the only way you get that is when the kids actually like build the robot I uh, just looking at your website. Um, I see the presentation is on there. So thanks for sharing that. Um, I assume you're not going to be sharing the link to the Google file is um, your engineering notebook is a Google doc, right? Uh, one of the notebooks is a Google document, but the other one is a word document, which is where the actual stuff is. So like the, uh, Google Doc is used for content and management of the content. It's basically where I copy paste the document from the, uh, okay. or like the content from the drive to the Word. But the Word document is a very, very, very large file. Even if I wanted to upload it, it would not work. So gotcha. like it, it's, yeah, it has a lot of pictures in there. Lots of like words, text, graphics, like you name it. it it's filled to the brim. So. so how do you share it with the judges at the competitions then? That one we printed out. So uh, actually we can, Funny story about that. So what we used to do, and I do not recommend teams do this, is um, like uh, last year, the way we managed the notebook, I'll be honest, wasn't perfect uh, up until like the world stage where we switched from state to worlds. We kind of changed our whole process. I was 
really getting frustrated with the team because uh, I had to stay up late every single night. My coach can tell you about this. Uh, printing out every single page of the notebook, reprinting it two or three times because it wasn't working properly. And I had to go out of there and I was just so frustrated leaving at 3 a.m. right before the competition. And I had like two hours of sleep before I had to get up for the next competition. Don't do that to anybody. Just print it out the week before and you'll be just fine. But uh, yeah, it's, in short, we did a lot of printing, uh, a lot of reprinting as well. You could certainly avoid that if you do what Parthiv said and plan it out in the beginning of the season. And like, as long as you don't have to do any like content changing, you'll be fine. That's something we actually did have to do because uh, we had huge formatting issues with the uh, the section for the formatting and content issues actually with our engineering meeting section, which I really drilled on the members to change between state and world, which is why we had that reprinting. But towards the world stage, we kind of printed a week early. We printed our stuff out very early and that was really, really helpful because we were able to practice our judging with that notebook. We had a couple of members skim through the notebook and it was really helpful because it got our team a lot more prepared as opposed to having it just, uh, you know, last minute printed out. But yes, printing is the way to go. We have a laser printer at our house. That's the way we go for it. So, so managing an uh, engineering notebook, it's actually a quite an experience for the senior team members. And that's one of the learning targets for us. So um, Suresh and I, as a mentors and coach, we don't really look at read the engineering notebook. We don't know. We actually keep our hands free from it. And just get the kids to write the engineering notebook and that's it, whatever it is, you know. And they were responsible 100% for it. Yeah, that's the way we've functioned for the past two years. And it's like pretty successful, if I'm going to be honest. Even if you don't get the awards, I would highly recommend it because the kids actually get something out of it. And I know uh, one of the points that was actually brought up earlier by one of your questions about uh, kids not feeling like it's a burden. That's something we've had issues with every single year. And I feel like every single team has an issue with that because I'm the only person that I know in like the entirety of FTC pretty much that voluntarily wants to do the engineering notebook. You're not going to find too many kids like me. And uh, to be honest, it's going to be really difficult to do that. But uh, in order to motivate the people to actually do it or give them some sort of like incentive or reason behind it is really to like, um, it, it's kind of like saying, okay, you know what? This is something you guys have to do. Honestly, if you were to put your mind to it, this is something I tell uh, the kids from Overcharge all the time. If you really put your mind to it, it takes five minutes to write an entry. Five minutes. There's no need to overthink it. It's a very simple process. All you do is just go there write down what you did for the day and you leave. It's very, very simple. It's not a difficult task. It's just a five minute commitment. You don't have to spend 30 minutes trying to figure out what to write. This isn't an essay. This is not like some sort of PhD paper. No, it's just a simple documentation of what you're doing with your robot. And it should be something that's really simple to make. So like, I guess that's another motivation point. You know, it's not a huge deal. It's not a huge issue. If there are any issues, somebody else can come and look through it. Like peer editing is always a really good strategy. Having one member write the entry and having another member check it for content issues, maybe even those grammar issues that you might see to like quickly fix. But uh, yeah, that's another strategy to use. People find that like to be very helpful because like not everyone at meetings is going to have something to do. And that's like one of the ways to like really engage them to do something. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Sorry, I just noticed I had my mute button on. If no one else has other questions, I can keep asking. I got another question as well. Um, it looks like, see, I don't know much about the, could you talk a little bit more about the control award content sheet? Something I haven't heard about and, and what's the purpose of it and um, what, it, what's, what's it, what it involves. Can you just talk a little bit more about the control award sheet? Patif, can you go ahead? Uh, yeah, so the control worksheet, it's basically where you have the outline for your autonomous paths and like where all you go and orient yourself in the field. And then you have some about the different algorithms you use in your code and uh, tell you of autonomous, like the things that you think are like 
really smart and innovative within your code, you need to add that as well and kind of market it to show the judges that you deserve the control award. And then also the sensors. Like say you use a uh, sonar sensor and color sensor combination for figuring out some uh, block or, you know, like movement around the field. You can show them that you use this combination and you use it in this program and you kind of like, it's, it's really useful towards your robot and it helps your functionality on the field. So that's like, that's pretty much like what you include in the control word sheet. Like essentially it's helping you for the control word. Uh, it's more about how you use a sensor and then write the program to utilize all these sensors to achieve your goal. And nowadays you have a lot of this AI components in there and make sure you include them as well. You know, you have some trainings and whatever you do it. I, um, I haven't touched any of the programming for two years. And this is another thing I outsource to all the kids. So it seemed to be um, quite successful for us. And kids will take the responsibility for that. And also uh, uh, regarding the control award, there is a form on first which you need to fill out and it gives an outline of um, uh, things that you can add in there and you can get an idea from there too. Is that the form that, okay, yeah, I think I it's, see It's that. on first, yeah. Yeah, I see that. And you just include that form in the notebook as it is? Yeah. Yeah, the engineering notebook will, you want it to use it as a, a proof, you know, you then, and make sure you have labels market so that judge can easily find the entries related to the to your control and software programming and all the experiments you have done for that you know we have a lot of experiments asking kids to, to do um, for the various different uh, algorithms like you know pid control how, how you tune it and the tension flow how you how you do it and all those uh, different kinds of you know how you make the robot drive straight using the IMU and all those, you know, you, and people, uh, you ask kids to do experiments and then, and make sure you document all of these. Any questions else? Um, I have a question for you guys. Um, is your team, and I'm Sarah, by the way, sorry. Um, is your team, um, is it all done after school? Is there any in-school component to it? Is it all outside? Uh, we are community teams. And so we, we have meetings three times a week, every, uh, two hours per meetings. So we've done Wednesday and Friday afternoons, seven to nine, and then Sunday afternoons. So yes, so we are outside the school team. Yeah, but that being said, uh, for me personally, a lot of the work that I did with the notebook was done in school. <laughs> so I don't recommend that, by the way. That's not a good idea. But yeah, that's we're mostly an out-of-school team. That's how like a lot of the teams here operate, but uh, in school components I've seen definitely like uh, there are some school based teams that work and like they do a lot of their meetings after school like or sometimes they do something in school but I don't really see entry notebook to be part of an in school curriculum but hey that might be something that could be integrated so thanks mm -hmm. And I guess I'll ask one more question while I'm at it. Um, as far as like, so this is my first year coaching. So um, you've mentioned a lot, I guess, what would be your biggest suggestions for new teams? Like what are the things that I should absolutely work on? Uh, I will tell you some stuff from my perspective. So uh, handling a new team was something that I've done before uh, during overcharge first year. And the biggest mistake, I'll just tell you the mistakes, honestly, not like, 
things that you should do because I don't really know that, but I'll just tell you the mistakes so you avoid them. Um, my biggest mistake was not reading up until the injury notebook uh, up until around December, which is when I started. And that is to be precise one month before our competition. So I spent the best part of winter break every single day and night. I locked myself in my room doing the word document, writing up entries, making sure everything's formatted, making sure the members do all the work. Like this is just like half of the list of the things I had to do. Honestly, it was a terrible process. It was really tedious. My parents were very annoyed with me, but um, like the, the problem with that was that um, I really delayed everything because first off, I didn't really know where to go to. I didn't have any resources at that point. Like, yes, we did have the previous team hotwire which i was a member of we did have them as a quote-unquote resource but there was no person from hotwire that i could really talk to it was just me by myself right and uh for that i really found it as like a difficult strategy for me to like find a way to do the notebook so i was kind of like hey let me just procrastinate on this that was the worst decision ever get it done with the second you get the ability to if you find a resource for example like i know part is definitely a resource overcharge can be a resource if you find the other local teams they're going to be your resources feel free to reach out to them, talk to them, ask them questions. That is the way to go because when you do have that resource, it's going to be super helpful for you because uh, you'll have someone to rely on aside from just yourself, right? I really wish I did have that resource that first year because otherwise I wouldn't have just chased my tail over and over again that winter break. It would have just been a quick process for me uh, throughout the entire year, just slowly update it. You know, it would have been a really nice process, but procrastination definitely just did not do well. Uh, another thing is the designation of members and figuring out your team structure so this is kind of similar to the previous point as in figure it out a lot early but uh to be a little bit more precise in this case figure out who you're going to assign to the notebook or if you plan on doing an everybody does the notebook process make sure everybody gets the memo uh make sure you set up a solid structure for example like these people will be writing these entries on these days and you need to have a certain manager to really look after that and like enforce it even if that manager is not going to write the entries because that way you'll finally be able to get it like that manager could be the coach right saying hey uh, this person needs to be writing this entry by this day. Uh, make sure that it's done. If it's not done, like the next time you see them, hey, you're sitting down and finishing this entry right now. And like that's honestly, it it sounds like a really like annoying tactic to like employ, but uh, it's really the best way because otherwise you're, the notebook's just going to keep on slacking. I'll tell you from experience from last year, that's what ended up happening. I kept telling people to do entries. Nobody did them. And I was too busy working on the robot to really care about the entries up until winter break again of last year where I really had to just hustle on them and it was not a fun experience. So again, like really figure your stuff out early on in the season. It's going to help you out. Like it's going to benefit you greatly with the robot performance as well as your actual performance. And like, I guess your mental health to some extent, but yeah. It's a very, very helpful uh, tactic. I would really recommend you plan things out. Uh, Partiv, Zvenklin, you guys have anything else to add? So, you know, we try our, all of the way to supervise the progress of the engineering notebook. And this year, we have a girls, eight grade girls, and then to be the engineering notebook supervisors. And she has done a great jobs. So basically what she did is that uh, She's been doing is have a Google Doc and write out who is going to do what entries and finish by what day and just checking the progress and send up the, the reminder emails. And we, we need we need some of those uh, supervisors. Yeah. Better to be a kid and not me. What uh? What are your strategies for when kids just don't do it? Like if they just, it just it just falls through. Like do do you just pick up the slack and do it yourself, or is it a peer pressure kind of thing? Like what ha do kids just never fail? Like what happens? Um, uh, go ahead. I yeah, I I had to deal with both of those things. Uh, the first year was definitely a lot of uh, the I had to try and get the kids. I had to try and peer pressure them because what I did was um at one point. Like, I just kind of gave up on the robot work. I said, you know what? Whoever's currently doing robot work, you work on it. You guys figure it out. I don't care. Uh, because I was I was both looking over the notebook and the robot. And then afterwards, I, I had a point where I was just like, you know what? I gave up with the robot. You guys do it. Like, right now, it's able to function. So I don't care. Notebook. You guys, like, I had to stand behind every single person, every meeting. And I had to walk around circles. I'm not even joking. I could... I can't count them on the number, like my hands because that's how many times I circled around making sure people were on task because I saw people on IXL and stuff all the time. And uh, it wasn't really fun to deal with, but I had to do that. But that's really because like for me, 
Like, I'm just a kid working with a bunch of kids. Kids don't necessarily respect the other kid. And that's just the reason why they did that. It was kind of like a mentality or a mindset that they really had. That's kind of the reason why. But I assume as a coach, they're going to have some sort of respect for you. Like sometimes I remember I had to bring in Coach Zenquin. Uh, he had to bring him over and be like, hey, can you just stand here for a little bit? Just like scare them off. And like they, they were not doing their IXL. Uh, so that was definitely something that really helped out. Um, but as for the second point of like you doing everything yourself, that really happened towards the second half. Um, between state and worlds for us, uh, during our second year as a team, I really like, I, I, I was kind of fed up of the team. And I was like, you know what? I, I, I'm just going to do everything myself. And I just formatted it all. I wrote all the entries, rewrote like half of them. And like, it was, it was a tedious process. It was not fun. And I'll tell you, like, if I were to do FTC for one more year, I would never do that again because it was just a lot of like stress on me, a lot of work. And it was unnecessary too, because like, sure, it did end up getting us that control award nomination or connect award nomination at Worlds. But at that point, it wasn't necessarily worth it. So I would recommend in that aspect, like if kids aren't necessarily doing their work, obviously as a coach, you should just really sit them down and have like a talk with them, right? Like uh, hey, you guys aren't making enough progress and like speak from experience, maybe, you know, if you've ever had any experience with procrastination, be like, hey, this is going to backfire. Don't do it because I'm sure every kid does like, it's kind of like a, a normal thing to procrastinate for us. Like I've, I've been trying to not do it in college. It's been working, but I don't know about other people. So the whole procrastination mindset is definitely something that does like <clears throat> prevail very frequently. And the best way to cut that off is by just telling them multiple times, it's not going to work out. Right. And sometimes even if the kids don't do their work, maybe they, the only time they'll learn is by having a slip up. Right. So they go to a competition and they may advance, they may not advance. They may not get any control awards or like any of the, uh, the notebook based awards, they might get a, like a really good judge award, like the inspire award, who knows? Uh, the best way they'll be able to figure out themselves is by slipping up potentially. Lucky for us, we never had that slip up, but um, that's really like another way to help them out. But uh, I would really recommend like having that kind of talk. I highly doubt that problem will be an issue, especially if the coach is around. Uh, involved to the extent where they're standing by and making sure that the kids are doing their work, but not actively doing the work for them because that's when it crosses the line and becomes an issue, especially for the notebook. So I guess just maintaining that kind of like secure presence is very, very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, one of our goals as FTC learning target is to learn how to supervise the progress of the work. You know, that, that is, all the senior team members who learn that, you know, so that we deal out those supervising tasks to all the, you know, senior team members and each of them uh, um, just make sure it's their part of the work get done and learn how to, you know, manage it and supervise it and, and helping other people to achieve the common goal. It, it's a valuable learning process for them. Any more questions? Thank you guys for doing this. I really appreciate it. It was really helpful. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you for uh, listening, I guess. <laughs> and the questions are very helpful. Thank you for inviting us here. Yeah. You know, and we are still struggling. <laughs> you know, we, we, we haven't find the perfect uh, recipe for solving all these problems. So, you know, every year is different. We have different set of challenges with different people. So, you know, we just share our experience with everyone else. Well, when you do find that perfect recipe, if you wouldn't mind posting it on uh, overchargerobotics.org, we'd all really appreciate that. Thank you.
Yeah, I like that perfect recipe to be posted. Yeah. Hi, this is Lana Robinson. Um, yeah, I'm here in the bush. Um, it's going to be our first, very first in our school. So this is very, very helpful. Thank you so much. And uh, I do appreciate your time. From I mean, from the very beginning, I was like, oh, my God, I'm kind of like very overwhelmed about planning on how to deal with these kids, making sure that they have to do this and do that because everything is from scratch. It's kind of overwhelming for me now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Maybe you wanted to recruit one of those, uh, some of the senior team members, one other team or something like that, promising, okay, if you come here, you can be a captain or something like that. Well, that will really help them because uh, a team member as a supervisor sometimes is more effective than adults. And they will benefit uh, greatly from that experience as well. All right. I guess if we don't have any questions, we're done, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's about the time. Okay, thanks again, guys. Really appreciate you doing this, taking the time out to do this. It's really nice. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Keep in touch. <laughs> thanks.